Welcome to the Hearst Trading Room. This is the video update for the 28th of January 2013. Of course, last week in the markets was a really interesting time because the S&P 500 reached up to new highs. On the other hand, the Nasdaq significantly failed to reach up to new highs. And so we have uh, some fractured markets at the moment. Uh, which is very often a sign that, in fact, the upwards move that the S&P 500 has been enjoying uh, might very well be approaching an end. And so we are standing by to enter into short trades. Before we take a look at the markets, please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. Let's start by taking a look at the S&P 500. Now, this is still the analysis that I prefer in the S&P 500, which of course has the 40-week cycle trough in June of last year. And the trough in November of 2012 is, according to this analysis, a trough of the 20-week cycle. Now the alternate analysis, which we are tracking in the NASDAQ, has this trough here as an 18-month cycle trough. But I'm not taking that analysis seriously in the S&P 500 at the moment. And um, in the detailed video about the S&P 500, I speak about why that is. And I also uh, discuss how, in fact, even though this is my preferred analysis, if the alternate analysis is playing out, we would still be making the same trading decision but we would be taking a lower risk on the short trade that we are standing by to enter. And so that's a, um, a really interesting uh, feature of trading according to Hearst cycles, is that even though you might be in two minds about the analysis and about which analysis is correct, very often the trading decisions that you make are the same. So uh, take a look at that detailed video about the S&P 500 uh, to understand why that is. All right, uh, what else is happening in this analysis? Well, of course, the 40-day cycle trough occurred at the end of December. And uh, as you can see, this big move that's been happening up this year uh, is, is the bounce out of that 40-day cycle trough. And we're expecting price to turn down soon and uh, come down to this 80-day cycle trough over here, which is expected around about the first week of February. Of course, that will be the first turn down um, in in a series of moves down into the 18-month cycle trough, which according to this analysis is expected uh, probably sometime in April, towards the end of April. If, as the market turns down, uh, and uh, forms this 80-day cycle trough, it then bounces up and uh, reaches even further highs, new highs, then at that point, of course, we would uh, shift our analysis to consider the alternate analysis, which is in the NASDAQ. But um, we will still be making the correct trading decisions. We will be trading short into the 80-day cycle trough and trading long as price bounces out of that 80-day cycle trough. If we're surprised by great profits in that long trade or at least greater profits than we, than we expected going into the trade, then we would adjust our analysis. So uh, the analysis and the trading, of course, work hand in hand as you... Um, uh, analyze and then trade the markets on the basis of the analysis. So what's happening in the S&P 500 at the moment? Well, uh, we are expecting an F category short trade next. And uh, let me just quickly go through the sequence of trades here. Uh, here is the A category trade, uh, B interaction, and then C interaction. And then there's the D interaction. And E was the interaction that we missed over New Year. Um, unfortunately, because of course it would have turned into a very profitable trading opportunity, but of course the actual price cross occurred on New Year's Day, um, which was just a little ironic because of course we weren't trading on that day and so we couldn't take advantage of this profitable trading opportunity. What do we expect next? We expect the F category short trade to occur next as price comes down below the FLD. And so that's what I am standing by for in the S&P 500. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, where, as I've mentioned, we are tracking the alternate analysis. 
and uh, here is that analysis and as you can see the 18 month cycle trough according to this analysis is here in the middle of November and the 80 day cycle trough is the trough which formed at the end of December and uh, take a look at the detailed video about the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq uh, in which I discuss the reason why um, the 80 day cycle trough most probably formed then according to this analysis Okay, so we have two possible analyses and they differ in two ways. One has to do with the magnitude of the trough in November and the other way in which they differ has to do with the magnitude of the trough at the end of December. And there's a very good reason why um, we only track two analyses and we don't track four with all the different combinations. So according to this analysis, and let's just uh, zoom in and take a slightly more detailed look at what's happening. And... Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, of course, the Nasdaq has significantly failed to reach new highs. And last week was actually a very disappointing week for the Nasdaq. While the S&P 500 was steaming up to new highs, the Nasdaq was in fact uh, struggling to get anywhere. Sign of a fractured market very often indicates that um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're about to see the markets turn down. So let's take a look, according to this analysis, at the FLD and price interactions. Here was our A category interaction, uh, which again, of course, happened uh, over New Year's Day, and so we, we couldn't enter that trade. And uh, it was a good thing that we didn't, because um, by the time uh, we realized that the FLD and uh, price interaction had in fact occurred, uh, a good degree of the move had uh, um, been missed. As you can see, at present, the NASDAQ is still below the high of the 2nd of January. So, uh, you know, it charged up here to the 2nd of January and it spent the rest of the time uh, really sort of fiddling around and not going anywhere. So that fiddling around and not going anywhere is uh, a typical of a B category interaction. And so that is what it seems uh, happened after price uh, rushed up to the high on the uh, 3rd of January. And in last week's videos, I discussed why uh, we should enter into a C category long trade in the NASDAQ. And uh, that is exactly what we did as price exceeded the high of the previous week uh, on Tuesday of last week. And so that was a C category long trade. I took a very low risk position in the NASDAQ because I still consider this analysis to be uh, an unlikely alternate analysis or a less likely alternate analysis. And so I took a very small position in the NASDAQ uh, for the C category long trade, which turned out to be a good thing because it hasn't been a very successful trade so far. Uh, we're not out of the trade, we're still in it, and we are making a small loss on each one of these trades. Luckily, a small loss because we took a very small position. But the initial stop loss is down here, and that initial stop loss has still uh, not caused us to exit from that trade and so now we're in an interesting situation where in fact uh, price might have come down and actually formed the 40-day cycle trough uh, last week a very subtle and early 40-day cycle trough uh, and if that is the case then what we would expect to see next is price breaking back up above the FLD over here and that would be an E category uh, long trading opportunity so because we're still in the C category long trade, um, uh, I, I'm sticking into in that trade um, because it might in fact turn into an E category long trade and we would expect to see, of course, uh, some profits developing out of that trade. Uh, if, on the other hand, uh, price continues to fall, then it would seem that uh, the C category long trading opportunity is over and it was a disappointment of course and uh, so we would exit from our long C category trade and I will reverse into a short D category trade because uh, price has broken back down below the FLD so I will reverse into a D category short trade but I will be taking a lower risk position even in that short D category trade in the NASDAQ because according to this analysis it's not likely to be a very profitable short trading opportunity. According to the other analysis that we looked at in the S&P 500 of course it will be a very profitable short trading opportunity. 
So uh, we trade these two closely correlated instruments by um, taking a big position in the one instrument and taking a much smaller position in the other instrument because um, that is the alternate analysis for this particular instrument at the moment. Let's take a look at the euro to US dollar. We have recently enjoyed a profitable A category trading opportunity in the euro to US dollar and uh, our trade 1 was exited at the T1 target over there and our trade 2 was exited at the T2 target over there. Uh, in last week's video, of course, we had only one trade open, our trade 3, and we were applying the 3 bar trailing stop, and uh, we were exited from that trade 3 on Tuesday, uh, right down there at the low of the day. We might have avoided that if we'd uh, bended the rules slightly and adjusted our 3 bar trailing stop to the low of the previous week. Uh, but I was uh, following the rules, and so we exited from our trade three. In, in fact, that wasn't a disaster by any means. I think we made uh, something like a $100 profit out of that trade three. So um, I wasn't complaining. Uh, and, of course, it also uh, opened the way for entering into a C category long trade. And that's exactly what we did last week on Friday. We entered into a C category long trade. Take a look at the detailed video um, about the euro to US dollar to see how you calculate the T2 target for a C category trade. Uh, it is a little more uh, tricky than usual because we cannot use the FLD level because, of course, price isn't crossing the FLD. So in the detailed video about the euro to US dollar, I, I walk through that example. Um, in terms of calculating the T2 target. Our T1 target, as a matter of interest, was reached um, right at the top of the day on Friday. So we exited from our trade one in this C category long trade for a profit and, of course, immediately adjusted our stop losses on our remaining two trades, our trade two and trade three, adjusted that stop loss up uh, and thereby reduced our risk. So we are in a reduced risk position now in this particular trade. And um, what is going to happen next? Well, uh, of course, we'll be monitoring our C category long trade, but we are also standing by to enter into the next trade, which will be a D category short trade as price crosses back down through the 20 day FLD. Finally, let's take a look at the British pound to US dollar, which has become my favorite instrument because of our very profitable uh, trading opportunity that we're in at the moment. We're in a short F category trading opportunity, which we entered shortly after the new year. And it's proved to be a very profitable trading opportunity. Here is our T1 target. We exited from our trade one. Uh, on the second day of the trade, our trade two target uh, was down here and we exited from the uh, uh, trade two at a profit, of course, about two weeks after entry. And uh, we're still in our trade three. So we're running with our profitable trade three. We're making uh, over $800 profit on that trade three at the moment. And we have started implementing our three bar trailing stop and so there it is over there so uh, we've had um, a really uh, profitable time in the bridge pound to us dollar and in fact we've had a run of profitable trading opportunities in the bridge pound to us dollar our a category uh, trading opportunity was profitable here and our c category trading opportunity was very profitable over there and the other um, opportunities we didn't take because they were around um, new year and christmas uh, but it's worked out very well for us. And so our next trading opportunity in the bridge pound to US dollar is our A category uh, long trading opportunity when price crosses above the 20-day FLD. Of course, we'll be taking a, a low risk position in that trade because the longer cycles are still pressing down. And so um, we'll be taking a smaller trade in um, in that long A category trade in the British pound to US dollar. Let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet to summarize what's uh, been happening. Of course, I color the background of the rows in this spreadsheet according to the status of the trading opportunity or trade. Blue colored rows are open trades. Orange colored rows are trading opportunities that are still active, but the actual trade itself has been closed. And the green background rows are trades 
that I'm standing by to enter, so they haven't been entered into yet. And so you can see our euro to US dollar, our C category uh, long trade in the euro to US dollar. We took a $133 profit from our trade one uh, when that exited on Friday, on the on the day of entry. And um, so that's the only trade that's been exited. That's the only closed trade in that particular trading opportunity. We still have two trades open. And uh, then our next trade is our NASDAQ. And here you can see we still have all three trades open in that NASDAQ. That was the C category uh, long trade in the NASDAQ. I took a very small trade to control my risk because of the alternate analyses and the the um, uh, uncertainty surrounding those analyses. So it's a very small trade. Um, the most that I stand to lose out of all of those trades at our initial stop level is $166 per trade. And of course we will be reversing our position and going into a, a short uh, category D trade in the NASDAQ and um, our next trades which are open are of course our bridge pound to US dollar we've only got this one trade still open our trade one and trade two both exited and so we took uh, a $600 profit from trade one and trade two together and our trade three at the moment if it exits at the level of the three bar trailing stop today uh, will take a profit of $533 of course that three bar trailing stop will be moving down over the course of the week and um, so uh, we could well take more than that from our trade three. And that summarizes uh, what's happening in the Hearst Trading Room for the 28th of January 2013. If you have any questions or comments as always please put them into the box below this video and I look forward to seeing you later this week or next week in the Hearst Trading Room.